All right, so let's talk about some of the main benefits of React. The main benefits of React come down really to two concepts that we're gonna talk about here. And those are reusable components and efficient re-rendering. So let's start off by talking about reusable components, all right? And to start this off, let's imagine that we wanna create a blog site with, I don't know, let's say 100 pages, okay? So our blog site is gonna have, of course, a home page, right? that it's going to have probably an about page and it's going to have lots and lots and lots of blog pages right i'm just going to draw those like this here and the problem with this if we were to write all of our site in just plain html and css is that when we get to all of these blog pages, remember that we could have a hundred or a thousand or 10,000 or a hundred thousand, right? We could have an awful lot of blog pages, for instance, uh, medium.com. And if we were to write this in HTML, we would have to actually have a separate HTML file for each and every one of those pages. So the problem with that, of course, is that these pages are gonna have a lot of things that they have in common. For instance, it'll probably have some kind of cool header photo, right, that shows a landscape or something just to attract the reader's attention. And it'll probably also have something like a subscribe form. And it may well show that subscribe form several times in the page, right, if it's like most blogs. Now, imagine this HTML page, right? It's all written out in HTML and duplicated over, let's say, let's, let's just keep the number small, 100 pages, okay? If we wanted to make a change to how our blog pages look, what we would have to do in that case is go through all hundred or thousand or 10,000, et cetera, pages of our site and copy and paste whatever code, you know, whatever changes it was that we wanted to make. So, you know, in other words, we'd have to make the same exact change about 10,000 as many times as pages that we have, okay? Now, if that sounds unpleasant, it is. And that's why libraries like React have come along with a better way. Okay, so the way that React would handle this situation is a little bit different. Instead of having an actual HTML file for each and every blog page in our application, what React does through reusable components is it allows us to sort of abstract out things that are similar in our site. So if all of our blog pages in our site are pretty much the same, then what we can do is we can actually create a blog page component, right? So this thing here would just be a component and we would be able to render it a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand different times with different data, okay? So this would be our first component. Inside this blog page, let's say that we wanna display the subscribe form several times on our site. Okay, so, you know, in addition to having it on our blog page, might also wanna have it in our about page, for example. What we would do is we would simply create a subscribe form component, and we would simply include that once inside our blog page component, and once inside our about page component. So. In other words, now, when we wanna make a change to all of the blog pages in our site, what we can do is we can simply, let's say that we wanna do something like change the text inside our subscribe form, right? Or change the information that we gather from our readers. Well, what we could do is simply make one change to that component, and it would automatically be reflected across all of the pages in our application. Now, if this sounds a lot easier to work with than basic HTML, then that's because it is. And that's why reusable components form a very large part of not only React, but also pretty much all front-end libraries in use today, such as Vue and Angular and Svelte and all those other ones out there. So that's the basic concept of reusable components. We're gonna be seeing how to work with components in React a little later on, and just some of the things they allow us to do. But let's move on first to talk about the second main benefit of React, and that is efficient re-rendering. Now, before we get to efficient re-rendering, let's talk about rendering in React first of all. In React, as you're gonna see, we use a special syntax called JSX, which looks an awful lot like HTML, right? So you might have divs like that with some kind of text in the middle, 
and a closing tag like that. So if you've ever worked with HTML, working with JSX is gonna be pretty simple. We'll talk more about that later on. But essentially what React needs to do in order for the users of our application to actually be able to visit our site and see what our site looks like is React has to take this JSX, which the browser has no idea what to do with, and transform it into actual HTML. Now these two things look pretty similar right now, uh, you know, just in uh, on this drawing, but they're really very different things, as you'll see later on. So that's what rendering is. When React takes all of the components, all of the React code that we've written, and generates HTML, which can be displayed in a web browser. Now, Here's where re-rendering comes in. Let's say that we've created some kind of application, right? Maybe it's a basic to-do list application. I'm just gonna draw that here, right? So it might have a text input and a button here that allows the user to create new to-dos, right? They can enter, go to the grocery store, hit the button, and it will create new to-dos in the list, which is gonna be down here. So let's imagine that we have a list here of different elements, each of which contains data about, you know, one to do, right? So go to the grocery store, right? Uh, this could be learn about React, whatever, whatever's on your to-do list, right? So let's say that we have this rendered to the screen, right? This is all HTML elements. You know, this is there's probably a div surrounding this whole thing. Each of these is probably its own div. You know, you have button elements, input elements, etc. Now let's say that the data changes somehow, right? Maybe the user clicks this button and creates a new to-do. Maybe the user, you know, maybe each of these to-dos has a button that allows you to remove the to-do and the user clicks one of those and removes one. Well, in that case, we need to change the HTML that the user is seeing. We need to basically remove one of these to-dos or add a new to-do in the HTML. Now, if you were gonna do this with vanilla JavaScript, and by vanilla JavaScript, I just mean, you know, JavaScript without any kind of libraries or frameworks. If you were gonna do that using vanilla JavaScript, what you would have to actually do is write code to specifically remove one of these elements. So you'd have to find an element by ID or class or order, something like that, and remove it from the DOM. Or if you were adding an element, you would have to actually find this container element around our to-do items and add a new one in there, okay? Now that might not sound too bad in the context of this simple to-do list application that we're talking about, but once you start getting into more complex applications, right? Imagine even something like Trello, where it's a board and things are moving around and other people are editing it at the same time. In situations like that, it gets tremendously complicated to make sure that what the user is seeing is actually representative of the data behind the scenes. So that's what efficient re-rendering is all about. When the data of our application changes, right? When the user deletes a to-do in this application or moves cards around on a Kanban board, what they see after that has to reflect the new data. So that's just plain old re-rendering, right? Making sure that the DOM that the user is looking at reflects the data behind the scenes. Efficient re-rendering takes this one step further, okay? So again, let's, let's imagine that we have this to-do list and one of these items changes, right? Maybe a user marks it to-do as complete, adds one, etc. What other libraries such as Angular might do in this situation is simply re-render the entire app, right? So this whole thing, would have to be re-rendered from scratch. And, you know, basically all these things would be removed and then it would go in and insert all of these elements into the DOM again. Now, that's not particularly efficient and it's also not necessary, right? Because in our case here, if only one of our to-dos is changing, we shouldn't have to re-render the entire app. If this to-do is the only one that's marked as complete, let's say, if the user clicks the button, then why do we have to re-render these other to-dos? They're just gonna look the same. Why do we have to remove them from the DOM and then put them back in? Now that's where React comes in. And React has some special algorithms for doing this in a very efficient way and only re-rendering the things that need to be re-rendered on the page. Now, again, in much larger applications or more complex applications, this can end up really improving performance if done correctly. Now. Now, optimizing for this stuff is something we're going to talk about much later, but 
For now, just realize that this efficient re-rendering thing that we've talked about here is a major benefit of working with React. And those are really the two main benefits of React, right? One is reusable components, and the other was efficient re-rendering. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.